Welcome to the last official video of Module 1. Uh, in this video we're doing what's called dimensional analysis. Uh, I won't give you the mathematical definition of this. It says dimensional analysis is a problem solving method that uses the fact that any number or expression can be multiplied by 1 without changing its value. <laughs> Alright, so basically this. Dimension Dimensional analysis is when you change a unit of measurement, such as like feet and seconds, to a different unit. Um, I can change one foot into 12 inches. I can change one minute into 60 seconds. We know that as a fact because we know that one foot is 12 inches, so we can change that. Uh, the only difference between them is that they go by different units. So that's the word we're looking for, different units. One foot is 12 inches, but they're just in different units, even though it's the exact same measurement. Um, so to make our life easier, instead of saying dimensional analysis, we're just going to say converting. All right? um, it's a whole lot easier. We're basically going to convert one thing into something else. Uh, in order to do conversion, you must have what's called a conversion factor. Uh, it's simply two different units of measurements that are equal. Uh, we've already talked about some, but some other ones, of course, are one foot equals 12 inches. One yard equals three feet. One pound equals 2.2 kilograms. Um, now, those... I personally know off the top of my head because I've been teaching this mess for a long time now. However, you don't. So, if you have not printed off your Modula 1 formula sheet, you need to do now, do it now, before you do anything else with this video. Because if you don't have that where you can see it, you're going to be completely lost in this video. Okay? When you do, you should see a list of things where it's going to say one something equals something, something equals something, something equals something. And this is a whole long list of different things. Those are our conversion factors. The hardest part about conversions is finding the conversion factor you need. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work one problem with you. Um, and show you, kind of walk you through it. I'm going to work all these problems out, of course, but after this first problem, I'm going to get you to start pausing the video and I want you to find the conversion factors. And like I said, that's the hardest part. So, let's just go ahead and get this thing started. The very first problem, you got a little box there that says number one, this is your number one. It says convert three miles to feet round to the correct significant digit. That is the problem that you need to be writing down in number one. Okay, So convert 3.1 miles to feet round to correct significant digit. This last sentence is going to be a big thing when you start doing your homework and your test. Okay, Now, all right, conversions. Let's think about it. Let's kind of break things down just a little bit simpler for just a second. When me and my wife were having our first child, as you can probably hear one of them screaming in the background now, I had a plan to get from my house that was in Aurora, North Carolina at the point in time, all the way to Greenville, North Carolina, to the hospital. I knew where I was starting and where I needed to be, and I knew all the different roads that would help me get me there. All right, Conversion is the same thing. You need to know where you're starting, where you're going, and what you need to do to get there. So, starting point was my house, the end point was the hospital, conversion factors were the roads I was turning on. That's kind of the way I want you to look at this. So, for this problem, it says uh, convert three point miles, one miles to feet. So, where am I starting at? I am starting at 3.1 miles. Okay? What's my end game? Where am I trying to get to? I am trying to get to feet. Now, I need to know how to get there. So, I got to find the conversion factors. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my formula sheet that I have printed out, which you should have by now too, and I'm going to look for it, and I'm going to see that this happens. One mile 
is equal to 5,280 feet. All right? Now, this is my game plan. I have a direct route that can get me from miles to feet. Okay? This says one mile equals so many feet. So that is my route that I'm going. All right? So this is how we're going to do it. After you get your game plan, all right? Now, I will tell you this. You don't have to write this down every time. This is just to organize your thoughts. So after you've organized your thoughts and you've got your game plan, you know where you're starting, you know where you're going, you know how you're going to get there, start to do it. All right, so ask yourself, where am I, go, am I starting from? I am starting at 3.1 miles. All right, right now, I want you to put a one under, just like this, instantly. You should be saying, hey, I need to put a one under there. Why do you put a one under there? Because I told you so, and you shouldn't ask questions. Okay, literally, okay. Uh, we need to make this into a fraction, and the easiest way to make this into a fraction is by putting a 1 in the denominator. That's really what we're doing, okay? Other than that, just say, oh, Mr. Lewis told me to put a 1 under it. Okay, 1 under it. Now, we don't want miles. What we want is feet. So we have to multiply by a conversion factor. So I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor. How many conversion factors do I need? Well, in this case, I have one conversion factor. So I'm going to multiply by only one conversion factor. All right. Now, this is where people get confused at. People get confused between converting and proportions. You remember in the previous one, I said what's on top stays on top, what's on bottom stays on bottom. That don't happen now. Okay, how you like that grammar? That don't happen. All right. This is conversion. Where in pr previous problems with proportion, we wanted to keep the same unit. This time we want a different unit. So what's on top goes to the bottom. Think about it like this. If I'm all up in your face like this and you can see me, ooh, I'm right here. Do you see me? Okay, you're going to get aggravated with me pretty quick if I was up in your grill like this. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to push me away. Same principle. You don't want this guy up top, so you push him down to the bottom. So miles goes on the bottom. But what you do want on top is feet. So feet go on top. So what numbers go where? Hey, that's where this guy comes in. It says one mile, so hey, I'm going to put one mile. It says 5,280 feet, so that goes there. Now, miles cancel out. What's left is just feet. So what I do now is multiply across the top. Do not get confused with proportion where you cross multiplied. This you just multiply. So 3.1 times 5,280 gives you 16,368. 1 times 1 is just 1. So we're just going to leave this at 16,368. I'm going to write this a little bit bigger because this pen doesn't seem to be showing up too good on the video. All right. One uh, 16,368. Now, this is not my answer. I need to find out what my units are. So this is going to be feet. In the normal world, this would be it. That's it. There's nothing else to do. However, we're not in the normal world. We're in math class. And it tells me at the very end, it says round to correct significant digits. Oh, no. Significant digits. All right, so let's make this easy. Your instinct might be to count each and every one of these significant digits and find out which is which. Don't do that. Look at what you started with. How many significant digits were in 3.1? Two. So we're going to round this to two significant digits. We're only going to look at where we started with. All the stuff that's here, don't worry about it. Just look at what you started with. Okay? So we're going to round to two significant digits. Well, that's one, two. This three tells that six to stay the same. All these numbers become zeros. And since this is a whole number, these zeros do not get dropped. And our final answer, 
to this problem is 16,000 feet. So if I told you not to round, if I just told you to convert, this would have been your answer. But if I asked for significant digits, this is your answer. So be very cautious on that. Now, I can tell you to round any way I want to. So as long as you've got the original process, the rounding at the end should be cake for you. Because I can tell you to round to the nearest thousands, hundreds, tens, ones, decimal point of any decision I want. But for this case, significant digits, so we just look at what we started with. All right. Um, hey, look. I actually have an eraser instead of a dirty sock today. All right. So we're going to change this problem around just a little bit. And I'm, if, I'm going to move just a little bit faster because I don't want this video to be overly too long if I can help it because I just don't. So the next problem is 27.1 pints and we are changing that to gallons. So we're changing 27.1 pints to gallons. And again, round to correct sig figs or significant digits. Alright, so what we're going to do, where am I starting at? Well, I'm starting at 27.1 pints. Where am I trying to get to? I am trying to get to gallons. So, this is what I want you to do. I want you to pause the video right now and I want you to look at your conversion sheet, your formula sheet, and try to find the conversions or conversion factors that you need. All right, notice there might be a plural here. I do know that in your sheet that you're going to have two conversion factors that you're looking for. So, I'm going to just kind of do this for just a second while you look at it. So, pause the video. All right, now, that was a good one. All right, so, you've paused the video, you've looked for the conversion factors. If you haven't, shame on you. Uh, nanny, nanny, boo, boo. All right, so, my conversion factors were this. I know that one quart is equal to two pints. I also know that four quarts are equal to one gallon. Wait a minute, what just happened here? I told you a while ago that in your conversion sheets that you were going to probably need two conversion factors. So that's what's happened. In this case, I have to go from pints to quarts and then from quarts to gallons. Now some of you are saying, but Mr. Lewis, why can't I just go from pints to gallons? If you know how to go from pints to gallons, we're good for you. I'm not going to show that. I'm showing you what you have on your formula sheet. All right, now, so where do I start? I start with 27.1 pints. What do I tell you to go under right now? A one. I'm going to multiply this by how many conversion factors did I come up with? I found one, two, so I'm going to multiply it by one conversion factor times two conversion factors. All right, now, I'm going to start with this first one. I don't want pints, so pints are going to go to the bottom of this conversion factor. And because I'm using pints, one of these I have to use. Well, does this one have pints anywhere in it? Nope, it don't. How about this one? Yes, it does. So since this is pints, the top number I've got to use is quarts, and I'm going to put one quart over two pints. So this conversion factor went here. Now, the biggest problem I see people do when using multiple conversion factors is they want to use the same one twice. I've used this one, and since this is done, I'm going to cross it out so I don't use it again. Now, I'm going to look at this guy. Uh, before I do that, pints goes away, and I've got quarts now. I don't want quarts. I want gallons, so I'm going to put quarts down the bottom. And since I'm using this conversion factor, I'm going to put gallons up top. And quartz goes away. And since I've used this conversion factor, I can scratch it out. So I've just set up my entire problem now. Pints went away, like we said. Quartz went away, like we said. But what's left? Gallons, which is what we want. So I'm going to multiply across the top. 27.1 times 1 times 1 
gives me a screaming child in the background, but with a number of 27.1 over, now I'm going to multiply across the bottom, 1 times 2 times 4 gives me 8. What was my unit that was left? Gallons. Now this is not our final answer. We need to go ahead and divide. 27.1 divided by 8 and it gives us 3.3875 gallons. But the problem told me to round to the correct significant digits. So what, how many did I start with? I go back to my starting position. This had one, two, three significant digits. So I need to go one, two, three significant digits. That seven tells that eight to go up. So this becomes a 3.39. These two numbers become zero. But because they're zeros at the end of a decimal, they're trailing zeros and they get dropped. So it's 3.39 gallons. All right. So pause the video if you need to. Otherwise, I'm going to keep on trucking. Problem number three, you should have 17.59 cubic feet, and we are changing that. Oh, excuse me, that's not cubic feet, that's cubic yards. Wow, can't write a Y. Cubic yards, and we are changing that to cubic feet. All right, so. Pause the video. I want you to try this on your own. Uh, I won't believe that you've tried pause the video, so I'm going to do this again. All right, so I'm assuming you've paused the video. If you have, good for you, and let's work this out. So I'm going to move this a little bit faster. If you think I've gone fast before, I'm moving faster now. You always have the rewind feature. All right, so my start, 17.5 cubic yards. Now look at what I did. This says yards to the third power. That's cubic yards. I like writing it like that a whole lot better than C-U-Y-D. All right. N is going to be cubic feet. My conversion factor is one cubic yard is equal to 27 cubic feet. All right, where am I starting with? 17.59 cubic yards. I'm going to put a one under it right now because I've told you to multiple times. I'm going to multiply by only one conversion factor because that was all I need. Hopefully you found this conversion factor. So I'm going to put one cubic yard down at the bottom. I'm going to put 27 cubic feet up top. My cubic yards gets canceled out. I'm going to multiply across the top, and when I do, I get 474.93 over 1 times 1 gives me 1, and this is all in cubic feet. Well, we know that 474.93 divided by 1 is going to be just simply 474.93. But the problem told me to round to correct significant digits, so I have to look at my first number to begin with. This first number has one, two, three, four significant digits. So I have to round my number to one, two, three, four significant digits. This three tells that nine to stay the same. So four, seven, four, point nine. My three becomes a zero. And since it's a trailing zero at the end of a decimal, we can drop it. Feet cubed. So it's 474.9 cubic feet should have been your answer. All right, I'm going to keep on going. All right, so this one, I want you to go from 4.1 centimeters to millimeters, all right? Now, uh, all the way up to this point in time, we have been using what we call U.S. customary measurements. This is now metric, all right? Um, there are some easier ways of converting metric, 
without having to look at your formula sheet, but I'm not going to do that right now. I may make a video about King Henry and his butt cheeks just to kind of give you a little hint, but that's not a mandatory video. It might, it's just kind of a hint, um, but I'm not doing that now because I want to, I'm just going to keep with the formula sheet. We'll talk about King Henry and his butt cheeks another time. All right, so. Uh, with the screaming child in the back, where am I starting from? Same thing, we know this to be 4.1 centimeters. Where is my end game? Millimeters. What is my conversion? I know that one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters. All right, same thing like we've been doing. Where do I start? 4.1 centimeters. What goes under right now? A one times how many conversion factors? Well, I've got one conversion factor. What goes on the bottom? Well, since I'm trying to get rid of centimeters, centimeters goes on bottom, and I'm trying to change millimeters, that goes on top. Centimeters cancels out. 4.1 times 10 is 41. One times one is one. Divide by one, uh, excuse me, 41 divided by one is just going to give us 41. I'm not going to write all this out. And I get 41 millimeters. Now, it says round the correct significant digits. What did I start with? I started with 4.1. How many significant digits is that? One, two. How many significant digits do I have here? One, two. So do I need to do anything else to this? No, I don't. Here's my final answer. Alright, now we're going to do 4.8 kilograms to grams. Alright, 4.8 kilograms to grams. So, same thing. Where am I starting with? 4.8 kilograms. What's my game plan? I'm trying to go to grams. Alright, what are my conversion factors? Pause the video if you need to. Find your conversion factors. Alright, I'm going to keep trucking for the sake of time. I know that 1,000 grams is equal to 1 kilogram. I know this. Now, I can do my job here. So, where am I starting again? 4.8 kilograms over 1 because I told you to multiple times times how many conversion factors do I have? Only one. So I'm going to put 1 kilogram here. I'm going to put 1,000 here, and that's going to be grams. My kilograms cancels out. I multiply across. I get 4,800 grams over 1, which is just 4,800 grams. It's, now I've got to go to the significant digits. Go back to your beginning. How many significant digits do I have? 1, 2. So look at this. 1, 2. Okay, stop and ask yourself. That zero does it, tells that eight to stay the same, right? And all these would become zero anyway. But since I only need two specific digits anyway, how many were here in, in the first place? Were these zeros significant? No, they're not. Go back to your rules of significant digits. Zeros at the end of a whole number are not significant. So really, this answer just stays the same. 4,800. All right? Hey, we're doing pretty good. A good pace. And if I am moving too fast for you, please, please don't hesitate to pause. That's what these, that's why I've got this up on video for, is so you can pause it and rewind it and look at my handsome face to your heart's content. Um, next one. All right, so we've gone from U.S. measurements and stayed in U.S. measurements. Then we kind of looked at metric units and stayed in metric units. All right. Now, here's the thing. We're in the United States. We use U.S. units. Okay. However, everybody else in the world uses metric. And so when we go to export and import goods, we have to convert from our unit to their unit. And it's the same process. Just like we've done everything else up in this video, nothing's really changing. It's the same process. 
uh, people make it out harder than it has to be, stop it. All right, so I'm going from 7.2 inches and I'm going to convert that into centimeters. All right, so convert 7.2 inches to centimeters. Pause the video, try it on your own, look for the conversion factors. I'm going to believe that you paused it. I'm going to stop here, pick my nose some more, fling it away. All right, I'm assuming you've paused. If you haven't, shame on you. If you haven't, you tried, awesome. All right, so where am I starting at? 7.2 inches. What's my end game? Centimeters. What are my conversion factors? Well, according to my conversion sheet, I found out, uh, i got to make sure I'm right, yep, that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. All right? You know what? I just noticed this right here says conversion. It should say conversions. And I'm not even sure if I spelt that right. C-O-N-V-E-R-S-I-O-N. Conversion. Eh, that's good enough. I'm, I'm not an English teacher. I'm sorry. All right. So now going back to it. Where do I start? Seven. I'm going to use blue. Oh. 7.2 inches over 1 because I've told you multiple times. Multiply by how many conversion factors do I have here? I have one conversion factor. So my inches are going at the bottom because I don't want inches. I want centimeters. So 1 inch, then this becomes 2.54. My inches go away. I multiply across the top and I get 1.8 two eight eight over one okay and this is all in centimeters now we know over one could just be 18.288 now same principle convert significant digits how many did i start with this one i started with two significant digits so i'm going to go one two that two tells that eight to stay the same so that's 18 all these become zeros and since that these three are trailing zeros after we've rounded, we can simply drop that and simply say that 7.2 inches is 18 centimeters. All right, number seven, number seven, track me along, track me along. And then I dropped my paper and I switched to another dialect. All right, so we are going to, last problem for this D7 is 631 um, km, can be pronounced one or two ways, kilometers or kilometers, depends on where you're from. I say kilometers, um, I think kilometers might be more, um, you know what, I'm not even going to say that because I don't know. I have heard it pronounced both ways, I just know that around where I'm from it's always been kilometers. All right, so convert 631 kilometers, and we are going to change this to miles. All right, so same principle as always. Where am I starting with? I'm going to start with 631 kilometers. Where's my end game? It's miles. What are my conversion factors? Um, depending on what you saw, I think there may be two two con different types of conversion factors. You may have saw something like this. One mile is equal to 1.6093 kilometers. And you may have also saw one mile is equal to 1.6 kilometers. Uh, I do know, if I'm not mistaken, that both of these conversion factors may pop up in your formula sheet. I suggest that you use this first one. Now, the reason why I suggest this is because your homework uses this. Even though, either one of these would be right, as long as you only use one of them. You can't use both. What do you notice about these two? Well, quite frankly, this number, 1.6, is this number rounded to the nearest tenth. This number is more, think about it, I have, have, multi, well, I have more significant digits 
it's more. We, got, we can say a couple things. We can say accurate. Mm, precise would be a better word because this right here is into the. This is tenth place. This is hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths. This is more precise. So we're actually going to use the more precise number in this case. And so if you solved it with this, you're going to come close to what I'm going to ready to do. Otherwise, this is the number you need. So I'm going to erase that. And remember, on your homework and on your test, this is the conversion factor that they're going to be looking for. And uh, if there's different than that, I'll double check. Okay? So just be aware of that. All right. So that little spells over. Let's go with it. 631 kilometers goes over one right now because I've told you to. Multiplied by how many conversion factors? Only one. So this is going to be 1.6093 kilometers is going to be on the bottom because we don't want kilometers. And one mile is going to be up top. We work all of this out. We get 631 times 1 gives me 631 over 1.6093. This is all in miles. We work this completely out. We get that it's 392.0959 blah 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 on our calculator. So 3 Nine, uh, 392.0959 blah 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 blah. All right, and this is in miles. Round to correct significant digits. Well, how many significant digits do I have in this one? This one says that I have 631. All right, excuse me, 631 is my number. I have three significant digits, not 631 significant digits. So I'm going to go one, two, three significant digits. That zero tells that two to stay the same. Three, nine, two. All these become zeros, but since they were trailing zeros, they just could drop. So my final answer is 392 miles. 392 miles. All right, so those are those seven. All of these here are very, are, uh, simple is not the word I'm looking for, but I guess we could call these uh, compound units, uh, not compound units, but common units because it's just a single unit. I go from one kilometer to miles or feet to whatever. It's just a single unit. However, on your next thing, it's what we call compound units. Compound units are when we take multiple units and we manipulate them through multiplication or division and we come up with a new complicated unit. Um, some common things, I hate to use com the word common, but some compound units that you are used to seeing, that's a better way of saying it, would be like miles per hour. The simple unit is miles, the other simple unit is hour, and so when we divide, we make it miles per hour or miles divided by hour. Uh, another one that you might have heard um, might be meters per second. You may have heard of that probably in a science class. More than likely, you've heard meters per second squared. That's something that's even more complicated, and that has something to do with um, uh, acceleration. Uh, and if you have no idea what that's talking about, well, don't worry with it. Okay, it's okay. We're not going to go in that depth. All right, so what we're getting ready to do is we're going to change this problem around. And we're going to go ahead and say, uh, for number one, we're going to convert 4.2 grams per, oops, not per, pium, per 100 milliliter, okay, and we're going to change that into ounces per quart. Now our final answer when we do this is uh, we're going to round to two significant digits. I don't feel like writing the whole word out. So we're converting 4.2 grams per 100 milliliter, I dropped the paper, into ounces per quart. So, huh? <laughs> All right. So let's start with our normal process. 
where are we starting at? We are starting at 4.2 grams. When you hear the word per, you should think division. So per is a division sign, 100 milliliters. Where are we trying to get to? We are trying to get to ounces per quart. All right, now, here's the problem. We have t multiple things that are be changing. So I'm going to kind of write this out for just a second, and then this might help you. Uh, normally, I've been telling you when you get a number where you start with, I've been telling you to do like 4.2 grams and put a 1 under it just because I told you to. Well, the reason why I was saying earlier is that we basically needed to turn this into a fraction. Here's the cool part. This thing already is a fraction. And what the fraction is is 4.2 grams over 100 milliliters. All right. Now... I want you to look at this. I have a top part and a bottom part. The top part is going from grams, and but what's it changing to? Ounces. So we have to find a way of converting grams into ounces. So not only do we have to find that, look at this. We have a bottom part. The milliliters right here has to be changed to quarts. So we have to find not one particular way of, uh, of conversion factors, but I've got to find two different, think of it like this, I have to find two different roadmaps. I have to find one roadmap that gets me from grams to ounces, and then I have to find another set of roadmaps that will get me from milliliters to quarts. So for now, what I want you to do is, I'm kind of running out of room here on the board, but we're going to do this together right now. I want you to find a conversion factor that will help me get from grams to ounces. So pause the video and look for that conversion factor. Look for anything that will help you get from grams to ounces. So I'm going to assume that you did, and you should have saw that one ounce is equal to 28.35 grams. All right. So this is one thing we need. This is one roadmap. It's the map that gets us from grams to ounces. Now we got to find the other roadmap. This map is going to get us from milliliters to quarts. So do the same thing, pause the video, try to find it on your own. Now I will give you a little bit of a help on this. You're going to have to find two conversion factors for this one. Alright, what you should have got is this. A thousand milliliters is equal to one liter. And then you should have had zero point nine four six liters is equal to one quart. All right. So sorry, I'm running out of room, but I want to go back through it again. Your first roadmap to get the grams to ounces. One ounce is equal to 28.35 grams. Your roadmap to get you from milliliters to quarts is 1,000 milliliters equals one liter, and then 0.946 liters is equal to one quart. All right. So now we have our roadmap. Okay. We got two roads. So how are we going to use all this? Well, a while ago, we kind of, I showed you how we were going to start it. Where I normally put, the, put it over one, this is our fraction, 4.2 grams over 100 milliliters. So what do you want to change first? Do we want to change grams or milliliters first? It really doesn't matter, but because I've been telling you how to change the top part first, throughout everything we've been doing, that's where I'm going to start. I want to change grams into ounces. How do I do that? I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor. How many conversion factors did I need to get from grams to ounces? Only one. Okay, so I'm going to plug this stuff in. 28.35 grams and this is going to be one ounce. My grams cancels out, all right? And now I'm going to multiply across the top. 4.2, this ounce stays the same, OK? 
okay, because that's left over, well, 100 times uh, 28.35 is 2,835 milliliters. Because remember, these grams got canceled out, and the only units I had were ounces up top and the milliliters down at the bottom. Now, I'm not done. What have I what have I done? I've changed my grams into ounces, so this whole piece is now complete. I don't have to worry about that piece anymore. Now I have to get rid of milliliters. Okay? So think this through. If this is, well, let's just go ahead and do it. In order to change milliliters, I needed to multiply it by how many conversion factors, according to my room map, times two. And I'm running out of room, so I apologize for the small handwriting now. All right, so what goes where? Remember back at the very beginning of the video, I got in your face in the camera, and I told you that you're going to want to push me away? Same principle, where, in, where I started at top, you pushed it down at the bottom because we didn't like it. Well, since he's down at the bottom to begin with, we don't want him there, so guess what we're going to do? We're going to push him to the top. So milliliters is going to go here. All right, so which one of these two conversion factors has milliliters? It's this one. So 1,000 milliliters over one liter. That one is now complete. Let's use the next one. This, we don't want the milliliters, so that cancels out. And since we don't want liters, liters is going to go on top. And what's left? My quarts. So I'm plug in these numbers, 9.46 liters over one quart. What happens to my liters? They cancel out. Now, what do we do? Just like before, we're going to multiply across the top. When we do, we're going to get 3973.2 ounces over, and now we're going to multiply across the bottom. Now, stop for just a second. Don't get confused with multiplying this stuff. This part's done. We only multiplied the 4.2 times the 1,000 times the 9.46. We don't do anything else with this. This part's complete. Okay. Now we multiply that top part. Now we multiply the bottom part. We get 2, 8, 3, 5. And the only unit I have down at the bottom is quartz. And when I work this all the way out, I get 1 point, uh yeah, 1.401 ounces per quart. Whew, that's a lot of work. All right, however, I'm not done. What else did I've got to do? I have to round to two significant digits. This time I was specific in it. Two significant digits. One, two. That four is what I'm rounding. So one, two. The zero tells the four to stay the same. So my ultimate answer is 1.4 ounces per quart. Now I will tell you this with at, uh, utmost certainty. This is a test problem and this is a hard problem. I suggest that you practice this until your face turns blue. If you're still struggling with it, please come back and re-watch this thing because it's the same procedure. Um, Nothing's changing from what I've done here on the board to what you're going to do at home. So go back and do this over and over again. And if you're still struggling, come talk with me. You know how to find me. All right, so I'm going to erase the board and I'm going to do the last big conversion problem uh, with you. Um, this next one is also a very good test question. Uh, hit, hit, nudge, nudge. Take the hint. All right, you are going to see this, this problem. All right, so we are going to convert. Uh, here we go, a little sing of a song. Going to convert 290 meters per second. All right, that's meters per second to miles per hour. And we want to have round to correct significant digits. All right, last time I rounded to two significant digits. This one I'm going to round to the correct significant digits. All right, so what am I starting with? 290 
meters per second. What's my end game? Miles per hour. Now, the biggest thing I see people have confusion with, this is M, but this is also M. You need to understand, this is meters per second, all right? Uh, sometimes on the homework, it actually says meters. Sometimes it doesn't. But you need to understand, this is meters per second. This is what we know here in America as miles per hour. All right, so conversion. So how are we going to go about doing this? Well, let's kind of look at what we're going to start with. I told you that it was 290 meters per second. Well, how many seconds is that? One. This is my start, okay? That's what it is. It's a fraction, 290 meters over one second. Now, I'm going to be changing meters I'm going to write the word out this time. We're going to be changing meters into miles. And we're also going to be changing seconds into hours. All right, so pause the video. Try to find the conversion factors that will make this happen. Uh, this one, to go from meters to miles, you are going to need two conversion factors. For this one, um, you can find two conversion factors, but there is an easier one that is only one conversion factor. So try to find the one that's only one conversion factor. It'll save you a little bit of time. All right, so pause the video. I'll pick my nose, sing a song, la, 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 la. I'm hoping that you've paused the video like you were supposed to. If you did, awesome for you. Awesome sauce if you did. Nanny, nanny, doo, doo. All right, so let's go on with this thing. Conversion factors from meters to miles. I know that a thousand meters is equal to one kilometer, and I also know that 1.6093 kilometers is equal to one mile. All right, so those are my two conversion factors. Uh, let me rewrite this so you might be able to see just a little bit better. 1.6093 kilometers is equal to one mile. All right, the other one was to go from seconds to hours. Uh, you may have had a harder time finding this one, I don't know, because it's kind of hidden, but I know that 3,600 seconds is equal to one hour. All right, now, just like last time, I'm going to start with my top, my numerator, if you will. I don't want meters, I want miles. So how many conversion factors did I use to get from meters to miles? Two. So I'm going to multiply times one times two. So what goes where? Well, since I start with meters, meters goes to the bottom because I don't want it, and I'm going to use this first one. A thousand meters is one kilometer. Why am I using this one and not that one? Easy answer. This conversion factor has meters in it. This conversion factor does not. So, meters cancels out. I don't want kilometers, so it's going to go here. And I'm running out of room again, so I'm going to have to write just a little small. So I'm going to get one mile over 1.6093 kilometers. My kilometers cancels out. I am going to work all this out. And I get 290 miles because mile stays up top, all everything else was canceled out, over 1609.3 seconds. All right, now, so that's the first part, and since I'm running out of room, I'm gonna write down here. I just took this piece and wrote down here. I'm now done with my mile, uh, meters to miles. So this whole section that I've done is complete. So what I'm going to do now is I like miles where it's at, but I don't like seconds. So I'm going to use this conversion factor to do that. And I know that 3,600 uh, 3, seconds is one hour. 
my seconds cancel out and for the sake of time I'm going to go ahead and work this entire piece out when I'll multiply 290 times uh, 3600 I'm going to divide that by the 1609.3 and when I do my answer becomes 648 point uh, 729 blah 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 alright so that's what your calculator should say but my answer says round to the correct significant digits. Well, this case, we're just going to go back to our start, all right? And how many significant digits do I have? Well, the two is a sig fig, the nine is one as well, is the zero. No, it's not because the zero is at the end of the whole number, so we're going to round to two significant digits. So one, two. That eight tells that five to go, I mean, that four to go up to five. So that gives me 6, 5, the 8 becomes a 0, all the other numbers become a 0. Alright, what happens to trailing zeros? They go away, and since that 0 was a whole number, it stays. We only get trailing zeros on, on a decimal, remember that. So that's 650. But what was I trying to get? Well, this was miles, alright, miles, uh, and what was left here was hours, so miles per hour. That's another long problem. Test question, test question. All right, be aware of it. These two will come back and haunt you. I will go ahead and tell you, you will see something very similar to this even on the final exam. Okay, heads up. All right. Um, again, like I said, please pause the video, rewind it, etc., etc. You know how to do it. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is we're on the last piece. I saved this last piece. Uh, I hate to say it. I saved this last piece for last. Well, duh, Mr. Lewis, it wouldn't be a last piece if it wasn't saved for last. I saved it because I think that this is probably the easiest thing you have to do in the module, and it's basically reading rulers. Um, hopefully this should be reviewed. If you don't know how to read a ruler by now, don't be ashamed. There's a lot of people who don't. Um, but for the most part, you should know how to read a ruler from the, uh, especially those of you who are in construction, this should be a very simple thing. And for those of you who are going in the medical field, it's not much different than reading um, a syringe. Uh, just a little caveat here and there, but anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut to the computer right now, and we're going to do a couple of problems, and we'll be done with the video. See you in a minute. Alright, so... This is the last little bit of piece that we're going to be doing is just some basic how to read a ruler. Alright, so this very top one is a ruler that is measured in inches, one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch. But then you got these little notches up the top. If you notice, there's an eight here. This is telling you that each notch represents a eighth of an inch. So for this one, and I apologize for my bad handwriting here, this first notch uh, that's right here at the end of the ruler, this is always going to be zero. It's never one. A lot of people say that you start here. You don't. This is zero. This is going to be one. This would be two. This is three. This would be four. And this would be five. Okay? So since this right here is 8, this is technically my denominator. So A is 5 eighths. Alright? Now this would become 6, this would become 7. Now we have a long line right here. Well this technically is 8 over 8. Alright? But simply saying this long line represents one. I'm going to draw a big one here. Alright, now let's go to B. Well, the number pattern repeats itself. Where this is becomes one, it's just a whole one. This is going to be one and one eighth. Alright, this would be, this piece would be, I'm going to just do it right here. This would be one and two eighths, one and three eighths, one and four eighths, one and five eighths, one six eighths, one seven eighths, two inches, all right? Then we would keep that pattern going. This would be one eighth, two and one eighth. I don't feel like saying two anymore, so I'm going to say one eighth, 
two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, and since we've passed the two, it's going to be two and four eighths. But remember, what's four eighths written uh, simplified? Well, four eighths simplified is simply one half. All right, well, what's D? Three. All right, now look at this next piece. Um, think about it. If this says 18, I mean, excuse me, if this says 8, that means your denominator, your denominator was 8. If this is 16, what do you think your denominator is going to be? It's going to be 16. So each individual tick mark represents 1. So we'll start off with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is 4 sixteenths or simply 1 fourth. All right, I'm going to let you do the rest of these on your own. Um, if you got any problems with how this is done, let me know, and I can work with you a little bit more. So let's go into the last little ruler. This is in tenths. All right, so this right here, same thing. This would be zero, and this would be one tenth. Okay, whoops, that didn't come out very good, so let's try that again. One tenth. Now, because of this, we can write this as a decimal. How do we do, write a decimal? Well, we write a decimal by change, saying 1 divided by 10, and we do, we can simply say that this is 0 0.1. Well, this one would be, this is going to be 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, or we write it as a decimal, 0 0.5. All right? Now, we have a big one right here. So this is going to be like 1.0. Then this would be 1.1 or 1 and 1 tenth, 1 and 2 tenths, 1 and 3 tenths, or simply 1.3. All right, you can figure out the last one on your own right here. Now, this one gets a lot of people confused because this is in hundredths, but it's only got the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 all the way up. Well, this is the way I want you to really understand it. This 1 is technically a 10. Why it is is because we're just using the simple measurements. Uh, this is more of a metric unit. Okay, So all of these are, are really counting by 10s. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And this right here would be 100, but it's still just a whole 1. So let's look at it. This E is halfway between 10 and 20, so if we're counting by 10s, this would be 1. Uh, excuse me, this would be, we can really do each hash mark represents 1. So this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this is really saying 15, sorry for my handwriting again, over 100. 15 one hundredths. We can change this into a decimal by simply saying 0 0.15. So let's look at F. Uh, this was 80, this long piece right here just below the 8, and that's 81, 82, 83. So it's 83 one hundredths are simply 0 0.83. Now this last one that I'm going to go over on G, it's past the 1. So this is going to be 1, all right, and uh, this is a 20, goes to 21, so it's going to be 1 and 21 hundredths are simply, as a decimal, 1.21. That looks more like a carrot than a point. So I'll let you worry about that. Again, I'm not spending any more time on this. This is about the biggest thing you're going to be doing with me measurements in this class. However, you know how to find me. Don't hesitate to call me. All right, so that ends this video. I am done with this module. I may give you a, an extra video to watch. It's not a requirement. It's, um, so be aware of that. It might be coming out with maybe within the next week or so if it hasn't come out already. It's about King Henry and his butt cheeks. And it's another way of finding conversion factors in the metric system without having to go through an entire formula sheet. It's just a quick way of memorizing things. So be aware of that and it may be uh, soon. Again, um, your test should be coming up in the next few weeks by, by the time you finish watching this video. Study hard. Do the problems I suggested. Uh, you need help. 
Send me your work. Show me what you've done, and then I will assist you. All right. I will talk to you later. Bye.